I know that people listening to this will feel the same. It is really, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to hear people talking about the things that they've struggled with. Right. Mm. Because I mean, firstly, like you don't hear it that often. Um, yeah. And also I, I really think that when, when you go to a coach, you want somebody who has experienced life, who has experienced, yeah. uh, you know, their, their own troubles, their own things that they've had to work through because you know that that person has had to overcome something. That person has had to really think about life in order to make it effective for themselves. And, yeah. and, and I really see that you've, you've done that right. And, and now that you're in this position where you've kind of overcome a lot of those, uh, those troubles or even, you know, are dealing with them effectively. What, how do you think this relates to the idea of a more fatty, right? This idea of love your fate. Cause that essentially is what the Stoics would call your fate. That's just the, the yeah. cards that you would dealt, right? How yeah. do you look back at it now? Um, and do you, do you think that it has been something that you now look upon with, uh, with, with deep gratitude that it has happened like this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it simply wouldn't be the individual I am today without that journey. And once again, <clears throat> you know, from a shadow perspective, um, what I've read about it from a psychological perspective, when you do integrate it, you fully start to get the benefit of what that shadow has given you. Now, I think in that regard, it's always helped me um, from a professional context with regards to intuition. So the ability to read markets and also to read human behavior. So I don't read markets as much anymore for obvious reasons, because that can sort of um, send the brain in, in, into a pattern, especially from an OCD perspective. And it's, I suppose a lot of, a lot of people will probably give up on trying to solve a problem where I, I become obsessed about that problem. And I simply mm. won't stop until I solve it, which is unhealthy behavior for me. But I'm also very intuitive in being able to read other humans, which helps me a lot with coaching and also to show empathy. You know, it's my frame of the world is only my frame, which is different to your frame, which is different to every other individual that exists. And I guess having those battles um, and having to, you know, failure is a terrible word because I haven't failed because I'm still here right now having this conversation with you and on a much better journey. Yeah, but I've had to shoulder my fair share of falls from grace, but they're the best things that ever happened to me because, you know, there's no other, there's no human that can come to me that I'm ever going to, well, I hope not um, judge or think less of because, you know, we're, we're, we've all got something. And if we're not, if we haven't experienced yet, it is coming. And that's, that's why humility is such a great trait as well, because, you know, if you start from a position of humility, there's nothing that can come along that can really flatten you because your ego just doesn't exist to start with. Mm. If, you put, if, you, if you can put that in the top drawer, well, you know, we've all got an ego to an extent, but if you can control it uh, and, and balance it out as best as possible, there's not really anything that can flatten you too, too bad. It's coming your way. So yeah, that you haven't dealt with in the past, which is a another classic stoic way of thinking, isn't it? That the whatever the future is going to deliver, you'll deal with it the same way as you've dealt with things in your life to this point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mate, it, it, it's an absolute. I have. I would not change change one thing. You know, I, I sometimes sit here and go, at the age of thirty eight, would it have been better? You know, if it happened at the age of twenty eight. But I, I simply wasn't ready. I, I, I was still, you know, you think about Icarus and the sun, I, I still was charging headfirst into that sun just to prove to whoever it was, mainly myself. Um, so I didn't have to, you know, take the armour off and disclose that, yeah, I, I, I do have some shortcomings in my brain. Um, and, you know, for, for whatever reason, some portion, proportion, some portions of society will frame that as, as a weakness, that's certainly changing now. Um, so at 28, no, I, I had to fly head first into the sun a few more times. And um, by the age of 38, I, I found the centre and, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going back there again. <laughs> yeah. I have to prove now. So, yeah, it definitely helps me, mate. It's, 
it's uh, it, it, it's a blessing like everything that happens to us in life. You've, you've got to get to a point where you can reframe that and see it from a different perspective or you'll get stuck very quickly.